grade or learn about a subject by saying it's against their religious beliefs. Do you agree or disagree with this result of the decision? Why or why not? What words, if any, are found in the U.S. Constitution or in state constitutions that protect the right to an education? How have courts balanced religious beliefs with other rights? You can go ahead. In the case Wisconsin versus Yoder 1972, members of the old order Amish religion were prosecuted under Wisconsin law that required all children to attend public schools until the age of 16. This raised the question of whether or not their first amendment rights was violated. In the six to one decision, the court held that the state law requiring children to go to school full time was unconstitutional because it infringed on the freedom of the Amish to practice their religion. We agree with the results of the decision. The free exercise clause, which was violated by the Wisconsin school is supported by the establishment clause of the first amendment that states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, meaning that the government cannot interfere with religious beliefs nor establish a national religion. To accept any creed or the practice of any form of worship can be compelled by the laws. The well-known phrase separation of church and state that originated in a letter that our third president Thomas Jefferson wrote to Danbury Baptist Association of Connecticut in 1802 is an argument seen during this time. It states that the government could not establish a state sponsored religion, but neither could it prohibit others from freely practicing their own religion. The results from the Wisconsin versus Yoder case was essential to religious freedom because it highlighted the importance of this individual liberty. The right to an education is not directly stated in the, in the Constitution. It is rather implied in the 10th Amendment, which states, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. The right to an education is a fundamental right that no one can deprive a person from and is protected by the US and state constitutions. Article 10 of the Illinois Constitution states, the state shall provide for an efficient system of high quality public educational institutions and services. Education in public schools through the secondary level shall be free. There may be other free education as General Assembly provides by law. Nearly all of the world's 180 plus countries provide the term education in a constitution. Most guarantee every child the right to a free education and many make participation in some form of schooling mandatory. Some even provide universal access to affordable college. Students are allowed the right to a free public education and none can be denied an education based on their race or religion. The landmark case Brown versus Board of Education ruled that segregating children based on their race was a violation of the 14th Amendment. Furthermore, Board of Education of Westside Community Schools versus Mergens ruled that schools cannot deny non-curricular activities the right to meet on school grounds based on religious content. All 50 states constitutions provide for the rights in education, yet the word education does not appear in the United States Constitution and federal courts have rejected the idea that education is important enough that it should be protected anyway. The Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment provides that a state may not deny to any person with its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law, which has been applied to the states to protect children from being deprived in education. In court case Engle versus Vitali, the Supreme Court ruled that states cannot hold prayers in public schools even if the prayer is voluntary and not affiliated with a specific religion. Additionally, the prayer violated the Establishment Clause as well as the Free Exercise Clause, which states that Congress shall make no law prohibiting the free exercise of religion. In the court case Wisconsin versus Yoder, the court ruled that any parent slash guardian can refuse to let their child go to school beyond the eighth grade or learn about a subject by saying it is against their religious beliefs. Additionally, the exercise clause coincided with Wisconsin versus Yoder as it permitted parents to restrict their children from attending school beyond the eighth grade for religious purposes. The establishment clause of the First Amendment prohibits the government from establishing a national religion, which in turn shows the balance of the law and religious beliefs. Our concluding argument is that the courts have balanced the separation of the law and religious beliefs by creating thresholds in which religion can be practiced freely. The First Amendment's religious clauses creates a balance in allowing citizens to exercise their religious beliefs while preventing federal, state, and local governments from establishing their own. Thank you. We are now ready for your questions. Great, thank you very much. Um, so let's take the Yoder case and put it into something that's happening in today's context as it relates to COVID and COVID vaccines. As you know, um, several schools across the country require students to have vaccines um, prior to going to school, but there are sometimes exemptions that are allowed. 
Um, what about in the case of the COVID vaccine? Um, should schools require it um, prior? Should they be allowed to rather? Should they be allowed to require a uh, COVID vaccine prior to letting students come to school? And what, if any, exemptions um, should there be um, based on our constitution? Um, I do see where a lot of schools, universities as well, um, are requiring for students to have the COVID vaccine in order to be to live on campus and to go to school as well. Um, I honestly feel like schools, I do see where they see like requiring vaccines, but I don't think it school should honestly make all children take the vaccine just because a lot of parents are very hesitant towards it. But I do see both sides to why they would require the vaccine and why other people would be scared to take the vaccine. I think that as a, oh, sorry. I think that as a student going into college next year, I feel like this is a conversation that um, we're having with my family, but I think that, I think colleges are allowed to enforce the vaccine, but in cases like with students with medical disabilities or if they're allergic with allergies, I know that it can have um, different side effects. So I believe that in certain cases that they should not require it for everyone. Uh, I agree with both of my colleagues as I see that the vaccine could be a good thing by helping the nation, helping us all get back on our feet. But I also see how some religions don't really require or really want vaccines to be put on uh, their children or their family at all. Some of them don't want medical help or anything like that. It could be a violation if it's if uh, it's mandatory in certain like schools if somebody believes in a certain religion, which could be a violation of the First Amendment right of the freedom of religion. Um, but other than that, I feel like it would be since you are looking for the good of the nation and the good of society. Given what you have said about the student's right to a quality education, how do you balance that right to a quality education to pursue life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness versus a parent, a parent religious belief that may have some control over that? May you repeat the question? Sure. Given what you had said about the right to a quality education, how do you balance a student's right to a quality education so they can pursue a bright future, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, compared to a parent's position or religious belief that may impact that right to the quality education? Um. Obviously their parents' religion is very important as well, but not all kids believe the same thing that their parents believe. I don't believe everything that my parents believe in religion. Um, so I don't think, I think it's up to honestly, the child if they're, with, if they're of 18 to make decisions for themselves. Obviously you do want your parents' opinion on it, but it all comes down to the child. So you, you three have, come out very forcefully in favor of people's rights to practice their religion the way they see fit without free of any government interference, correct? But the government interferes with people's beliefs and religion all the time, doesn't it? So for example, uh, if very religious individuals wish to pray in the middle of I-90 uh, and stop traffic, we wouldn't allow them to do that, right? Even though they're, they're practicing their religion in a very forceful way. So what are the circumstances when we say, even though your religious beliefs are very important to you and you wish to practice them, the government still is not going to allow you to do it the way you'd like to do it, including having a prayer vigil in the middle of I-80 or I-90 or I-95. <laughs> Does that question make sense? 
Uh, can you repeat it, please? Sure. So uh, there are all kinds of circumstances when the government interferes with people's uh, practice of religion, right? So if your practice of religion says that I want to, in order to have my religion, I'm going to eat peyote, uh, we could still charge you with a drug crime, correct? So you're not allowed to practice your religion the way you want to. Uh, if you wanted to build a church, we would still say, but you have to comply with sprinkler systems and uh, building codes, even though it might be more expensive and the church can't afford it. So there's all kinds of ways in which we interfere with, with people's free exercise of the religion. How do we decide when free exercise wins, as in Yoder, or when the government can do something that's against people's free exercise? I think that there's a certain uh, limit, like a certain range that's okay when someone's expressing their religion. I feel like as long as it doesn't harm anyone or affect anyone or put anyone else's like life in danger, I feel like they should be able to express themselves as long as they're not harming anyone else. So if you follow up on that, you previously said that you should not require vaccines for religious people if their religion doesn't believe them. But if they don't have a vaccine, aren't they capable of harming people? Because you can make someone, you can, someone can get sick from your, uh, from, from COVID or any other, or polio or smallpox or any other uh, contagious illness. Like this may be like, how would you balance those two things? I feel like it all comes down to kind of your religion and like where you stand. Um, before we never really had the vaccine in the beginning of COVID. Um, and yes, it was harming people. But now that people are getting vaccinated more, you see that there is some um, some look at that they want to make the community better. So I feel like if some people don't get vaccinated, it will be okay because that would kind of violate their religion as well, but it would also be okay because most of the people would be protected from that virus. Thank you very much. Great presentation, young ladies. Well done. Congratulations to your teacher, a great coaching. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to the judges to give you some feedback, but you should be very proud of yourselves. Yes, that was, uh, you guys did a great job. Um, your prepared statements particularly um, were very well um, researched and, um, and thought out. And, um, you know, you took a position and stuck to it and came up with the um, defensive, uh, you know, some, some, some uh, you know, different uh, places um, like the establishment clause and, and others um, to defend that position um, that you agreed. Um, so I thought that that was, um, it was very, very good. Um, and um, I think you all did a, did a great job. Thank you. Good presentation with respect to your argument uh, supporting uh, Yoda. I thought you, your discussion of the free exercise and the uh, prohibition on government deference is, is quite interesting. You, you also mentioned your own state's position on the quality of education. I could tell I stumped you a little bit by my own worthy, uh, very wordy uh, question. However, I, I think your position was well noted in terms of what you articulated. The children don't always believe exactly what the parents believe. So the children need a say. I would have loved to engage because you suggested 18 Yoda stood for a different proposition at, uh, in, in that sense. And uh, so a magical age as to what's the age where the child gets to really have that strong input would have been interesting to engage in with you, but very well done. Uh, thank you. Uh, I agree, warmest congratulations and um, very well researched. So you're the seventh team that we have seen and 
uh, you offered new substantive content that we had not heard from any other team that showed how deeply you have researched this. So I found fascinating that 180 countries uh, provide in their constitutions for, uh, for free public education. That is a wonderful piece of information. And you're the first team to say that, uh, by the way. Uh, I really like the way you uh, build off of Brown versus the Board of Education and finding the equal protection uh, rationale for uh, an education, even though the, there's no explicit right for a, a, a public education. I thought that was really nicely done. Uh, and I also, um, you know, really loved your going back to separation of church and state and Thomas Jefferson, 1802. Uh, so just a terrific job and, and uh, really enjoyed it and uh, also uh, learned, learned from you, learned from it. So, so gr great work and, and, um, and thank you.